We arrived. We had two 12s, beat fives. We had an 11 over a six. Three games went to overtime, one of which was improbably Kentucky St. Peter's, which is obviously where we'll start. For the 10th time in the history of the NCAA tournament, a two seed lost to a 15 seed. Final score, St. Peter's 85, Kentucky 79. NOT, a stunner in Indianapolis, dead leg on a scale mm. of one to mm. Sydney Sweeney. Oh, boy. How crazy is it that John Calipari's Wildcats are already out of the 2022 NCAA tournament? Do you have that team in the Final Four? No, I had UCLA. Okay, well, that's that, just, got, that, got, that, got, that got interesting. That got this interesting. could have been messier. This could have been messier here. Uh, okay, so a couple things here. First of all, the people want you to make a peacock noise. Are you willing to do that on the podcast? I saw the hashtag the G. I saw the hashtag G Peacock. Just so you know, G Peacock. Okay. As I, as I tweeted, I've been in studio all night. If my makeup looks great, it's because I've been in studio all night. It does. Thank you. And um, so I have to rush straight out of the CBS Broadcast Center, which is at 57th, uh, it's on 57th between 10th and 11th here in Manhattan. And then I got to get to 54th and Broadway. So they got a nice car waiting for me outside. I hop in and it's, you know, five minute ride, not too bad, but I'm hustling because I got to get back here to start the Ion College Basketball Podcast. And I did start to see, because I've been on TV for three straight hours, I started to see like people uh, want me to make a peacock sound. And it occurred to me on my ride back to the hotel. I don't know what sound peacocks make. Neither so, do I. I actually, I meant to look it up, but I haven't, I hadn't had time. Well, I don't know. You, you want to know how I want to try? If you want to know how I spent my ride from the CBS broadcast center to my hotel, it was by looking on YouTube okay. and listening to peacocks make sounds. You mean to give it a shot? Right. Let's hear it. Ah! Jonathan Chamwa Chachawa. Ah, ah, ah. Something like that. Wow. I mean, I give it to you, man. I didn't know if we were getting that, but the people demanded it. Don't ever say I don't prep for this podcast. I'm not prep for this podcast. Oh, it's a it's a late show, late show. Okay. Ah! It's going in the drops ah! eventually. Okay. Going in the drops eventually. What an incredible, incredible day. Thank you to everyone that is up. If you're up late on the East Coast like us, well, more power to you, but particularly our West Coast mountain audience, maybe Central Time Zone. Hello. This is the, let, yeah, let, me, let me tell you, this is where you can tell I've been in studio and you've been waiting to do this oh, because boy. I'm like still wired from being on oh, TV yeah. for three state hours and you so obviously are ready to go to sleep. <laughs> well, I just, I happen to only get, I mean, I'm up, I'm up the night before like watching Notre Dame and Mike Bray and get it all done. And then I'm trying to fall asleep and I'm geeked for the tournament. And then I had to get up at, I woke up at like five 15. So I've just been averaging like four and a half hours for like five straight nights. And it's, and it's about hitting me. I think I might be able to steal like seven hours tonight, but I'm good to go with you, buddy. And this St. Peter's win, uh, provided really an all-time moment in the history of the tournament. I don't know if it's the biggest one ever, but I saw some incredible, incredible stats coming out of this. Uh, one of which I think I want to highlight here. Um, shout to uh, to Tim Burke, Bubba Prague on on Twitter, who does an amazing job, basically covering all facets of media. And he he had the research. He said Kentucky's basketball budget for men is twelve point five times as much as St. Peter's. And he said, I can almost, uh, I'm almost certain this is the biggest upset by expenditures ratio ever, without a doubt. He said, for comparison, UMBC, when it beat Virginia, Virginia was only spending 5.7 times more. This stuff actually means a ton. I tweeted earlier, uh, St. Peter's is the toughest job in the MAC. It doesn't pay its third assistant position, which is borderline unheard of throughout most of Division I. It is so overmatched in every single possible aspect. And yet, for all the greatness of this game, this outcome, what the Peacocks did, I freaking love that. It, ah! I love ah! it. I love it. You're not getting this anywhere else. 
You're not getting peacock noises. Any, and I would do it, but I really don't know. Like, I hope I'm not waking anyone else up right next door. Um, this is so imagine you're the in the room tournament. next to me, and at 1 30 in the morning, you hear somebody making peacock noises. How outrageous! It's St. Patrick's Day, though. You get what you oh, get. Exactly. Uh, you know what? That's a great, 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 great point. Uh, this is the glory of the tournament, though. It, it absolutely is. It, you, you know, to get a school as small as St. Peter's on the same court as Kentucky. Man, Kentucky came into this game with 127 all-time NCAA tournament wins to its program. St. Peter's had zero, and now it has one. An amazing job by Shaheen Holloway. Just <laughs> incredible, man. Incredible, incredible stuff. It's the 10th time of 15's beaten a two by point spread overall. Um, it's the fourth biggest ever. Norfolk State is still the biggest by point spread. UMBC over Virginia is the biggest because it's the 16 over number one overall seed. Santa Clara was 20 point dog against Arizona 93. And then St. Peter's 18.5 dogs to Kentucky here on Thursday night. Clearly one of the biggest upsets ever. No question about it. You and I. Uh, we owe all the St. Peter's fans, and I'm sure our St. Peter's army is deep on this podcast, but we outright dismissed them. We might not have given this game six seconds on our mega NCAA tournament preview episode earlier in the week, GP, and we were wrong for it. Shaheen Holloway was, he just, uh, th this is going to change the course of his career, man. Like he, I don't know if he's going to wind up at Seton Hall or whatever, whatever. That's for down the road. You have a tiny, tiny, tiny school, and you know Doug Eddard goes for 20 points, gets a huge bucket to get it to overtime, hits the clinching foul shots in the bonus session. You got the National Player of the Year on the other side of the floor, and while there's so much to talk about, um, and it was an unbelievable Thursday, it, to see St. Peter's do what it did in that spot and make it to overtime and win, and win the way that it did, it just was the biggest, loudest reminder of how incredible this tournament is. And as I tweeted earlier, I tweeted like friggin' 55 times tonight. I was locked in. Uh, this is the universe, you know, reconciling for the past two years. No tournament in 2020. Last year was good, but it was different. This is now like, okay, this is this is what we remember. We remember fans and stands all across the country. Cinderella's going for it. St. Peter's, nobody had this coming. This tournament always fools us. We allow it to do so, and we're better for it. Incredible stuff, GP. Brian in the comments on YouTube tweeted that we should give the Paramount Plus gift card to the third assistant at St. Peter's. We should. <laughs> <laughs> That's point. good. It's a, it's a good point. point. It's a it reasonable is. point. Um, I think Pete Thamel tweeted this as well. Like every Kentucky assistant, you know, the top, you know, the three assistants that recruit mm -hmm. make like triple what Shaheen Holloway makes as the head coach at St. Paris, uh, uh, St. Peter's, which is not surprising, but still, you know, when something like this happens, you start finding every little bullet point you can find. Um, just an absolutely incredible win for St. Peter's and a devastating loss for Kentucky. Like we carry John Calipari's press conference live on CBS Sports Network. And I've obviously sat through a lot of John Calipari press conferences. You know, I was in San Antonio when, um, his Memphis team lost in overtime in the national championship game to Kansas. Like I've seen that guy take some rough losses. I've never seen him this down after a loss. I don't think, I mean, he was beaten down because as explained on CBS sports network early in the night, this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. You've got to provide the context. Here is a fact connected to John Calipari. Now after the worst season in Kentucky basketball history. He just gave him the worst loss in Kentucky NCAA tournament history. That's his past two years. Kentucky has not won a game in the NCAA tournament now since March, 2019. Now, some of that's because we didn't have one in 2020, but they didn't make it last year and they lose as a two seed this year. And he becomes just the 10th coach in NCAA tournament. Uh, men's division one history to lose as a two seed to a 15 seed in the round of 64. But I thought this was interesting of the 10 men who have lost these types of games. Five of them are Naismith Memorial hall of famers trivia time. Can you name all five run down that uh, criteria again? 
Lost as a two seed to a 15 seed. It's happened 10 times in history. Five of those 10 times, the loser was a Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame coach. Bayheim is a two to 15 Richmond in 90. Izzo is a two to 15 um, Middle Tennessee in 14. Uh, you've got K as a two to 15 Lehigh in 2012. Um, you've got, hmm, are you counting Cal? Yeah, so that's four. It's you Cal got one four. more to okay. get. Okay. Yeah, like you said, Roy it's Cal, it. it's Cal, K, Izzo, Bayheim, and there's one more. I'm thinking all the twos that lost. Frank K is not on that list, I'm afraid. Um, last year, uh, uh, was Holtman not on that list? Uh, um, we had one a few years ago. What was the 15 a few? Uh, let's see. When Gulf Coast won, it beat. Uh, when Golf Coast won, it beat Georgetown. So JT3 That's not right. on the list. Um, when Coppin State did it, I don't, I don't remember South Carolina's coach, but he's not on the list. So I'm missing one. What am I missing, GP? Fill me in. Don't want to make the listeners wait. The answer is Loot Olson at Arizona. Ah, Santa Clara. Come on. I just said it. That's a terrible job by me. Santa Clara over Arizona in the 1993 NCAA tournament. Middle Tennessee over Michigan State. Kermit Davis. That was actually 2016. But um, so he's got, okay. in fairness to John, got good company. In this club, but this is not a club you want to be in. And I, again, um, I didn't have time while we're on TV to go monitor the Kentucky message boards. But my understanding is that they were getting super duper ugly. When I tweeted, hey, Kentucky fans, we're going to be carrying John Calipari's press conference live on CBS Sports Network. The comments were like, who cares? Uh, we don't want to hear his BS anymore. Um you know, we know he's going to – we know, we it will be the same excuses as always. Um, tell me if this is true because I said this tonight, so I hope it was true. Um, John Calipari became a college basketball coach in 1988. He obviously left for a short period of time to go coach in the NBA with the Nets, but he has more or less been a college basketball coach since the late 80s. Does he enter next season for the first time in his entire college coaching career with real job pressure? I'd say I know what you're asking. To a certain extent, he's always had it, but I, it's a different dynamic that he would have. Yeah, there. no, I mean, I and mean, I like, I mean, like coming this. off of like you're gonna really. If he lost in the first round like, of the like NCAA what? tournament, if he lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament next year, do they move? Do they move on him? <sighs> no, I don't think so. But you're about to really see, like he's gonna really. I think he's gonna really feel the ire. Now I wouldn't say it's unthinkable, but this is like after last year and then this game, St. Peter's losing like this. By the way, Oscar Shibuya had 30 and 16 in this game, 30 and 16, lowest seed ever. But prior to this, Kentucky had never lost to a team lower than six. Dropped to Middle Tennessee in '82 as an 11. And lost to LSU in '86 as an 11. That LSU team made the Final Four. Um, so yeah, it's it's a devastating, devastating in terms of ex expectations for Kentucky. Their fans thought they could win the national championship, and they could. Again, Sheboy was great, but I give. I mean, if you watch that game from start to finish, Daryl Banks had 27 points. They continued to put to punch back. Time and time and time again, it was such a great watch because Kentucky, for the most part, it was terrible from three for the most part, but it was still like it wasn't playing horrendously bad. It was a good game. And St. Peter's just simply never wilted. Like we're not going to spend any time on Gonzaga, Georgia State, except for this. For the first 70 percent of that game, it it was like, are we really going to do this right now with Gonzaga? And then Gonzaga was like, you're done. You're sitting down. We're going to win. They flipped it in five minutes. Kentucky was completely incapable of doing that. St. Peter's 
stood up to the challenge, survived overtime. Shaheen Holloway, this tournament makes stars out of so many people, and rightfully so, and he's on a rocket right now, man. That is just an un- – I, I cannot overstate. And also, I can't overstate how unlikely it is for a team like St. Peter's, which isn't even the best team out of the MAC, to go into this kind of game and beat this Kentucky team. It's, it's incredible. It, I think it does rate easily on top five all-time up- – in the NCAA tournament's history. And if you want to go top three because of how good Kentucky was most of the season, because of the point spread here, because St. Peter's never had a, a win to its name in its tournament's history, I, I'd, I'd buy it. I'd buy it. It's not UMBC over Virginia, but it's about as surprising as any 15 over a two. I think it might get dulled just a little bit because this isn't the third time we've seen a 15 win. It's not even the seventh time. It's not the 10th time. So the more common these things happen, they're still not that common, but the 11th one probably won't be as shocking. And then the 12th one will be less shocking and, and so on and so on. But the, uh, don't let that detract from just the size of the accomplishment. And now St. Peter's is going to play Saturday against Murray State for a right to go to the Sweet 16 and become just the third 15 seed to ever have done that. If they could do it, they would join, of course, Dunk City and then Roberts from last year.